What I love about the Brandenburg Concertos is that they're just great pieces to play. There's so much variety. You have absolutely everything. You have horns, you have oboes, you have flute, you have solo flute. There's a certain equality between the strings, brass, winds. We're all in it together and we all have a, a very important role, each one of us, to play. Bach puts in millions of shades of colors in between black and white. So a soloist may very well be um, accompanying. And to know when to step in and out of the spotlight, whether you're a soloist or one of the band, as it were, is very important in these concertos. For us is this a whole nieuwe rol eigenlijk, want als je gaan bis bent, het is natuurlijk een zacht instrument. Dus je bent eigenlijk alleen maar zinvol als het een solo is. Daar komt het eigenlijk op neer. En in Brandenburg 6 zijn we echt het begeleidingsorkestje van de twee altviolen. En wat het leuke daaraan is voor mij, is dat het dus ook helemaal niet spannend is. Het is niet iets waar je zenuwachtig voor bent als voor een aria of een echte flinke solo. Waar je de hele dag al mee bezig bent, dit ga je gewoon lekker spelen. Heerlijk. Being the lowest string instrument in the ensemble, I'm placed in the position as the accompaniment, and that remains my role in the entire Brandenburg set. That said, I do find it a bit of a solistic role. With my uh, line, I can add timing, I can add texture, so there's a lot of freedom for me to influence the whole ensemble. So the important thing for me is just as I think a jump just go with the flow and see the structure of the whole piece and add my, uh, add my little bit. In the Brandenburg number two, Bach furthers my role as a accompaniment instrument by just putting me with the Ripieno group. So it's putting me in my place a bit. But, fortunately, being the great composer he is, at one point he lets the bass line take over that solo. You can hear it's not just a normal sort of bass line, but really a melody line and it really imitates what the other solo instruments have. So in that case, every now and again, he gives me a bit of a solistic role, even though I will be playing it together with the uh, harpsichord, with the cello, but still, it gives me that feeling of importance. When playing the Brandenburg Concertos, it's always a temptation to think, oh, I'm the soloist here, or I'm a tutti player here. But really what you're having to do is to blend with the other instruments, to blend with the other soloists who are playing with you at the time. It's a matter of finding a palette of colors that allows you to play with these instruments. And yet, two bars later, emerge as a soloist as well. And that, that is a very particular challenge, particularly in the, in the second Brandenburg. He's creating a mosaic here. Some stones or some tiles are meant to shine and the others form something larger. It's a part of a, a, part of a larger picture. I always try to imagine coming out of the, violin, of the sound of the violin or coming out of the sound of the recorder, coming out of the sound of the, of the trumpet. If you try and break it up too much, or oh, here's the oboe, here's the trumpet, here's the recorder. If you try and break it up too much, the piece becomes dislocated itself. Within these six concertos, there's a transparency. And it's this transparency, this allowing of light to come through always, that, uh, that for me is the most difficult hurdle to get over when playing these pieces. Because it's very easy to be dense, it's very easy to be thick when you're playing these pieces, but what is not so easy is to allow the light to come in. 
Good. Can we try this? Um, a little bit more compactor in sound. Yesterday in the rehearsal, Shinsko was isolating the different elements, the different Lego blocks, he called them, which is a very useful key to, to allowing light to come in. The great thing and the problem with these pieces is that they're so well built, they're, they're, they're structured so well, so you can just play them. But it's much more interesting and, as I've seen in our rehearsal sessions, much more efficient if you take out, for example, in the Brandenburg second concerto, you have dum -bum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, bum -bum. That's one theme. And then underneath, you have ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum. And then you have another one and then bum, 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 bum. and how many was that five or six elements and they're all combined so very much like Lego blocks no and once you understand that you know exactly how to play the whole movement because when you can identify exactly what you're playing then you can also identify the opposite of it and the opposite of dense sound is light and silence and this is a very important element in allowing these pieces to sing and to come through naturally again this equality that i see in this music it's equality also of material so the material is constantly passed around and um, everybody has to know what they're doing that's what's so fantastic, especially with these pieces, is the roles that get switched around from one instrument to the other. So every single one has its color and challenge and, and state of mind that you have to be in. You're one part of this amazing cacophony of music, one part of this amazing piece that spans over the whole six concertos. In die zin ben je constant aan het luisteren wat voor harmonie Bach gebruikt en wat voor functie jouw noot daarin heeft. It's a little bit like opening a clock. I mean, the clock can be also shut, but you can also open it and just look at, look at all the parts that are moving, and this moves that and that, the counterweight and the springs, and, and that makes the appreciation for it all the deeper. Mm -hmm.